most people listening will feel the same way. Like, how could you trust 26 year old with three years of real estate experience to sell your $45 million Montecito home? It was the social proof from my social media that share my expertise in, in digital marketing and, and I've been able to generate and, and sell um, luxury real estate based on, on that social following. You're in your 20s and you grew your TikTok following to over 1.4 million and then you joined the number one team in California. You have this deep expertise in social media, digital marketing. What is something that you see other people kind of miss? There's just so many benefits to, to having a presence on social media it can put you ahead of, of so many different agents and there are a lot of agents and, and entrepreneurs who still are not yet taking advantage of that. First of all, it's having an intention for, for the content that you're creating it really comes down to the hook those first three to five seconds are the most important of your entire video it starts with a pretty interesting snippet of a really expensive home i throw the price of the home on there so at the end of the day i'm also telling a story this is one of the most insane homes ever and what makes it crazy will obviously the price tag but it's got insane views from every single room which is something I think I mentioned. And from there, that viewer is thinking, I've got to keep watching this. I'm sure if you look at like early on, everyone sees the finish line. They see you out on TikTok with 1.4 million followers, but they didn't see you building it. You can talk about like what worked and then what didn't work. So... You're in your 20s and you grew your TikTok following to over 1.4 million uh, and then you joined the number one team in California. You have this deep expertise in social media, digital marketing. I was just curious, like when you look at everything that you know as an agent and then someone who grew a massive following on TikTok and built a business off the back end, what is something that comes almost so obvious to you that you see other people kind of miss yeah, that's a good question. Uh, I mean, I could talk about that all day, but I mean, just leveraging social media to to build your personal brand, to stay top of mind, to to generate leads. Um, and again, that list goes on, but there's just so many benefits to, to having a presence on social media and it doesn't have to go as in depth as what I did. You know, my, my business focused on, on content creation and, and social media strategy, but Having a mere presence on on the basics uh, can put you ahead of, of so many different agents. And there are a lot of agents and, and entrepreneurs who still are not yet taking advantage of that. So, um, yeah, we can obviously dive deeper on on what these agents and people should be doing. But having a mere presence on social media can can be a major difference, um, especially as, you know, the world of of real estate is becoming more digital and clients are now looking at our social media followings and how we can expose their listings to to our audiences and with the uh, influx of celebrity agents on tv shows um, it's just such a, a big part of our industry now and yeah it's it's obvious at this point that we should all at least be on these platforms and, and having a presence so i'm sure if you look at like early on when you were in TikTok, like 2020, 2021, 2022, the build for you on there. Um, everyone sees like the finish line. They see you out on TikTok with 1.4 million followers, but they didn't see you like building it. Um, and I'm sure that took a lot to get it to where it is today. So could you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, like you said, it's it was it was a journey for sure. Uh, a lot of trial and error, a lot of exploration, a lot of failure, um, a few wins, but those wins stack up over time, and and you you learn as you go. Um, but yeah, and it's it's also not something where it's like I've stuck to one specific type of content or one vertical of content the whole time. It's always evolving. Um, you know, daily, weekly, monthly. Uh, as these platforms get more saturated, it's, it's about, you know, staying on top of trends and, and being, you know, ahead of new ones. So, uh, yeah, in, in the beginning, it was really just, uh, kind of refining, a, a strategy and my backgrounds in, in content creation and social media strategy. And it was really my goal from the get go to leverage social, to, to build my personal brand and stand out as, 
a pretty young agent in one of, if not the most competitive real estate markets in the world, Los Angeles. And uh, I knew video was going to be key in that. Uh, At at the time when I first got my license in uh, July of 2019, um, TikTok had barely gotten going. Like it was still very fresh. Um, In fact, I didn't see a single real estate agent on the platform, which is where uh, my initial strategy kind of uh, came from, you know, being an early adopter to a platform that I saw had a lot of, you know, growth potential. Um, I was mostly focused on on Instagram and Facebook uh, doing video, but really just um, doing stories. Uh, I recognized the uh, maybe the the glitz and glamour of, of luxury real estate and how people who don't have access to those types of homes around the world would be interested in them. So I, I focused on doing a lot of uh, luxury house content. Um, that was kind of a no-brainer for me um, just to, to really get the eyeballs in the beginning, but kind of slow growth on, on Instagram. And this was long before Instagram Reels, but I, I saw TikTok as, as an opportunity to, to really grow and really just in the beginning experimented with repurposing the video content I was making for Instagram onto TikTok. And it was kind of one of those overnight things where the very first video I posted got like 50 or 60 uh, thousand views, which was like unheard of at the time. You know, I was going for like five, 6,000 views on a, on a really good day on a, on a video on Instagram. And to have that overnight without a single follower was just like, oh my God, what is happening here? Like, this is going to be crazy. Um, and then... It was like, all right, I'm going to like pretty much fully focus on creating content for TikTok because this is definitely the way to grow. I'll worry about funneling, you know, that audience uh, to my other platforms uh, later. But like, let's let's go all in on uh, on TikTok. Well, that was an earthquake there. Interesting. Um, (laughs) So um, sorry. Back to (laughs) back to TikTok. Um, yeah, it was it was it was pretty quick growth, but it was like it was really one of those things where it's like luck meets sort of preparation. Like I I had been, you know, figuring out how to create this video content, but wasn't experiencing much growth, but saw the opportunity on TikTok and was super lucky to be kind of one of the first, if not the first real estate agents on there creating content. So it was it was the perfect storm, but um yeah, that was that was just the beginning. Um then it was just, you know, finding what worked what didn't work. Um, a lot kind of did work in the beginning, but it wasn't really impacting my personal brand. Um, something we can touch on in a bit was like, yeah, I, I, I wasn't getting much out of it from a real estate sales perspective until I actually got in front of the camera. Um, which is like a huge, uh, I guess, note to, to anyone creating content. Like there are totally ways to create content and to build a real estate following. Um, without getting in front of the camera, but in order for you to really build your, your personal brand and, and have your audience get to know who you are on, on a personal level, which ultimately impacts the way, you know, you can take viewers to, to clients, to, to close sales, like getting in front of the camera was, was a huge game changer for me. Yeah. And we can take a look at some of your like best performing content and you could talk about like what worked and then what didn't work. Sure. Um, but I want to just talk about that for a moment. Like you noticed when you were on camera, there's like no connection. Cause I'm sure you, you've seen like all the agents make these listing videos, home tours, and it's a beautiful video of the house, but then there's no one in it. Yep. And how did that like strategy kind of change your strategy in seeing that? Yeah. hundred percent. So in the beginning, it really was just doing some luxury home tours, just, vertical footage of me walking around a house with with my phone and throwing some some popular music on there and they were performing super well but i i wasn't getting much out of that you know um the eyeballs were there the engagement was there but i i wasn't generating any leads no one knew who i was they just knew the name aaron grusho homes and, and luxury house content but there was there was a huge shift uh, a few years later when I did start to get in front of the camera, I never thought of myself as someone who would be in front of the camera. I was always the guy behind the camera. Um, I previously worked at, at content agencies, um, you know, creating branded content. 
uh, for, for digital. And, and I was the guy behind the camera, you know, um, not actually holding the camera, but doing the strategy behind it. And that was always my thing. I never thought I'd be the one to get really in front of the camera. And, uh, that's, that's really when, when things changed, my brand truly started to, to grow. People started to know me for who I was. Um, I started to build emotional connections with my audience and the support just like exponentially grew um the the traffic on my actual website started to to grow tremendously and um i was really able to kind of create that that social proof um that i think is is necessary for agents today uh to to really exceed in in these markets um and so yeah that's that's when everything changed and that's actually when i um you know got familiar with with aaron kerman and and akg at compass at the time um, and, and he recognized, um, you know, kind of what I was doing and, and appreciated it. And we really aligned and, and I joined the team there and having, you know, his, uh, I guess in real life, social proof and, and being able to leverage his, his network and his experience and, and notability combined with my social reach, um, really changed my business. So was this around the time? Because I was curious, can you talk about the like forty-four million dollar Montecito listing and uh, how someone would trust like a twenty-something-year-old with such a big <laughs> listing? In the largest listing attraction experiment in real estate history, over twenty-five hundred agents participated and generated twenty thousand listing appointments, which actually attributed to over seven point. 5 billion enclosed business for agents. That is the power of listing leads in action. We send over 25 hyper local newsletters, but you actually need to start conversations so you can generate more appointments. What to send, how to say it. That is why listing leads does all the work for you. You can just literally copy and paste and send. If you join today, use the code Andrew. Not only do you get a free trial, but I hooked our subscribers up with 50% off. For less than a cup of coffee a day, you can generate your own listing. Click the link in the description today if you want to generate your next listing. Now back to the show. Yeah, yeah, that's that's one of my current listings right now. And actually how I got that one is I had another listing right across the street. It was at, okay. uh, it was at 20 million. Um, unfortunate, very difficult story there. We got it in escrow within 24 hours of it being on the market. First showing, got it in escrow. Um, long story short, we had some issues with inspections and we couldn't, uh, we couldn't put a good deal together after that. And, uh, sadly I, I didn't end up, um, selling that one, but, uh, this, this was a neighbor and, uh, I had in addition to, you know, um, social media, uh, efforts, I, I did a lot of traditional, you know, real estate marketing and, and lead generation tactics, cold calling, cold emailing. Um, and, and this is someone I had, um, cold emailed, invited him over. Um, but when he saw, you know, yeah, I was, must've been 26 at that time. Like I'm sure most people listening will feel the same way. Like how could you trust 26 year old with three years of real estate experience to sell your $20 million or at this one, it was $45 million Montecito home, but it was the social proof from my social media that was kind of the the nail in the coffin there. Like once I was able to, you know, share my expertise in, in digital marketing and, and relay that that's the cornerstone of my business. And I've been able to generate and, and sell, um, luxury real estate based on, on that social following. Um, and, and luckily he was a guy who's very in tune with, with creative marketing and, and, uh, the digital space and, and automatically align with that. Um, that's, that, that was it right there. Um, so yeah, it was, it was a combination of, of traditional sales tactics, um, a little bit of credibility from having a listing across the street, but, um, he, he loved the fact that I was doing things a bit differently and, and really focusing on social. And I really sold him on my ability to, to expose that home to hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people locally, um, but also globally. Um, and, uh, you know, my audience is, is full of, of real estate agents as well. And, um, not just get that property out to the consumer. Now the average consumer capable of buying a $45 million home is probably not scrolling on TikTok. but I'll tell you, like, I do have tons of celebrities following me. Um, you never really know who's watching your content. 
And uh, I have a lot of agents following me who represent, you know, clients of all price points. So um, that was something that really resonated with with that client and, and helped me land that listing for sure. If you don't mind, uh, I was just curious, like, one, how did you get the email of that person, the $44 million house? And like, what did you send him to like peak his attention? Um, yeah, I mean, we, we have different, uh, platforms that we're able to find contact, uh, information, uh, for, um, which one I don't, I honestly don't really remember exactly which one I used for that. I think it may have been been verified. Um, I don't know if you guys know that one, but it's, it's really solid. And, uh, yeah, I, I straight up emailed everyone on the block, invited them all over to, uh, kind of like a cocktail hour, um, uh-huh. while we were in in escrow actually um i was like it, it, the the email the preface was something along the lines of like if you're interested in um essentially comparing your property to to this one we have it in escrow at this price point <laughs> um if you're interested in in just getting a little bit of of uh local street market knowledge would love to meet you come on by for a cocktail I'll show you around the home and we can talk about um specific uh comps and numbers for your property and uh he was one of the people who who responded and um yeah just just built the relationship from there that's awesome so you just when you're under escrow you're like let me do a whole nother event because like most people oh, yeah. know like the open house event all the launch events like people do but to do like a an event under escrow and then use that as like another tool that's it's just extra credibility right like i could yeah. invite everyone over um before we got that in escrow and and i honestly had planned on doing that but we did enter escrow super quick but it, it worked all into my favor like okay this guy already got this home in escrow <laughs> the market's hot shit like should i sell my home right now like what is my home worth and uh my my ideology was like let's let's capitalize on on that Fully. And uh, my client for that didn't want to have an open house, actually. Um, but um, I, I sort of convinced them to have the neighbors over um, for whatever reason, in, in case we needed backups, which we ended up needing, uh, unfortunately didn't get. But um, yeah, that turned into to another listing on that street that was over twice the price point. So definitely leverage your current listings to get more. Um, that's the, the, oh, yeah. the story there. That's a great story because, like, I think leveraging the listing is like the most important thing that you could do. One of the most important things you could do because it's your biggest asset. And yep, for you to use something like, "Hey, just in case, like, we fall under escrow, let's have some other stuff as backup." It's like, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, hundred percent. So, um, is there anything else about that story that? might find interesting i just thought i'd pick and ask yeah i mean it just kind of goes to show uh how much of a roller coaster this this uh, real estate sales job could be i mean uh two weeks before landing that listing i had a property in escrow that i had worked my ass off to to close fall out a week before closing because my seller decided to cancel and um so i was on such a high after working so hard to close this one deal in la and it just went down here and then all of a sudden i landed that listing i'm up here we got in an escrow within 24 hours of it being on the market i'm i'm up here and then all of a sudden i'm down here but then yeah. you know still leveraged that listing to get a listing twice the price point um a more sellable house I'm back up here. So it's like, it's, it's a roller coaster this industry. I'm sure we can all agree on that, but just, you know, uh, aside from most of the stuff we're covering today, like, uh, I think just riding that wave, appreciating when you do have those great moments, but don't get too down on yourself when, when you have those low moments, because it'll go right back up and, and, you know, keeping that positive mindset has been crucial for me. Yeah, that's huge in sales because it's just a bunch of highs and yeah. lows. So you have to like, hundred percent. Yeah, that's, that's all sales. That's not just real estate sales, but um, you guys know there's a lot at stake for every single one of these deals. You know, we work strictly yeah. on commissions, so um, especially at those price points, uh, it means a lot. Yeah, and so I was curious, like, when because 
most people would probably be like, kind of like you said earlier, it's like, can you even get listings, like sell like ultra luxury off of TikTok? And that's like, I think one good example of like, maybe not directly, but like you can leverage that attention to be like, okay, look at what I can do. So. 100%. Yeah, it's it's all, it's a matter of social proof right there. Um, I think you just have to learn the the language and how to relate to your clients, how important it is to have that that audience. And it doesn't have to be a large audience. You don't need to have a million followers, you know, just having more followers than the previous agent that they interviewed um, can go a long way if you can relay the importance of of digital and and, and social media in today's um, age of, of selling real estate. You know, um, it's important. And yeah, like you said, it's it's not always going to be directly um, through those platforms. But you never know who's watching. You never know what agents are watching. And just yeah, being able to to generate that social proof goes a long way. On the like listing presentation, do you do any like I don't know, contrast or juxtaposition between like every agent's going to like show you like how they do video and social media or is that just like, and here's what I do with it or is it just kind of like at this point pretty obvious with your accounts? I try and make it as obvious as possible before going into that listing presentation. But um, yeah, I, I definitely throw some numbers up there. Um, I don't necessarily do direct comparisons to yeah. other people but i mean just sharing the fact that i have you know over a million followers on social media i've generated nearly 300 million views um that's significantly more than probably any other agent that's going to walk through that door um and you know i hammer it down how important that is uh today and i leave with them understanding you know um, my value proposition is is going to be different than than the next agents, and it doesn't resonate with everyone. You know, no one resonates with everyone, but yeah, um, you get in front of the right people and enough people, um, you'll land a few. So, what is like? I'm sure there's some that kind of push back and say, like, yeah, I'm sure you can get me a ton of views on like social media, but like you're selling a 20 million or 40 million dollar house is my buyer even on there like do they say that stuff to you and you have to- yeah uh yeah yeah all the time and i'm i'm honest with them you know i'm like look like the truth is um there's no way to 100 percent tell you know who's yeah. who's watching my content who isn't watching my content i'll show you this this person's following me this person's following me this person's following me they all have a net worth um, that would make them very capable of, of purchasing a home like this. So, um, yeah, uh, and I'll, I'll share examples of people who have reached out, uh, who have requested showings from from social media, um, and, and nice. I'm just candid with them. Like, at the end of the day, you know, it's not a, a for sure thing, but it's just another marketing avenue that we add on top of all the other traditional marketing avenues that all the other agents are doing uh, to sell your home. So... Um, yeah, that's pretty much how it goes. That's interesting. You've, so you've actually had like high net worth people reach out to you, DM you like, Hey, can I see this house? Oh yeah. Uh, I don't know if you seen this or other people, but like every agent says the word like DM me for a tour. And I imagine the difference between like the amount of people who DM most versus the amount of people who actually DM you saying they're interested is pretty yeah. vast difference. I rarely do kind of a call to action, at yeah. least on on TikTok, um, which is which is interesting because like if if I said you know DM me for a tour, I can only imagine how many people would actually DM me to to want to see this home. Uh, on top of the already that I I get, and uh, you know ninety nine percent of them are not qualified to see the listings that I'm I'm showing. So, um, I actually like don't encourage people to DM me for a tour, but, um, I try and funnel the more qualified people to my Instagram from there. I'm able to have conversations. That's where I actually encourage DMS. And, uh, from there, you know, we can get to talking. Um, but yeah, I mean, TikTok, it's, it's so difficult to, (laughs) 
to, yeah. to qualify people on and to, yeah, like you said, I, I definitely get a lot of DMs, but if I did that, it would be overwhelming. Um, and yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty specific, uh, cases where I have gotten people reaching out to see certain listings. What have you learned when you're creating these videos? Like how to start the video? Like, what do you do to keep people's attention? Could you talk about that? Yeah, for sure. Well, this is this is just a case of of leveraging ultra luxury, eye catching, you know, homes. Um, my my goal for this is, you know, not necessarily to to generate leads, um, or really build my personal brand because I'm not in front of the camera. This is let's get as many views as possible and and spark conversations. So uh, it's first of all, it's having an intention for for the content that you're creating. Um, but then it, it really comes down to the hook. Um, you know, I, I, I'm sure you, you stress this to all the people that you talk to, but those first three to five seconds are the most important of your entire video and, uh, finding ways to, to sort of capture that attention, um, is, is my, my main priority, um, in, in the start at least. And as you see, it, it starts with a pretty interesting, a uh, snippet of a really expensive home. I throw the price of the home on there, $72 million, which in itself is just kind of mind blowing. Uh, yeah. So yeah, it, it, it all starts with, with that hook. And, and um, at the end of the day, I'm also telling a story. Um, so the, the voiceover um, kind of uh, starts to tell that story. You know, this is, one of the most insane homes ever and what makes it crazy will obviously the price tag, but it's got insane views from every single room, which is something I think I mentioned. And, uh, from there that viewer is thinking, Oh, okay. Like I've got to keep watching this, you know? Yeah. And, uh, first quick question, how do you get access to like, Maybe you could say like this home in particular, but just other people's homes to create content. Yeah. So in the beginning, it was straight up open houses. Um, that's okay. that's that's how I did it. Uh, specifically, brokers open houses. Um, yeah, I I knew from the get go that showcasing these ultra luxury homes was going to to capture that attention, and I had just got my license. Like I'm not listing anything close to this. I didn't get my first listing for a while, but like I was lucky enough to have access to these because I joined a reputable brokerage. I joined compass and, um, you know, I was able to kind of convince a lot of these agents that I could create them some really interesting content for social media. And, uh, nine out of 10 times they were like, go for it. Just, just tag me. Um, but, Nice. Actually, I shouldn't say nine out of ten times. It was probably fifty fifty in the beginning. Um, most of them were like, "What the hell? Like, what are you even talking about? Like, this was not a thing." Uh, now you go to an open house, everyone's walking around like a zombie with their phone in front of their face, doing this in LA at least, trying to capture these luxury homes. But before, like, it was pretty much frowned upon to to film or take photos of other people's listings and put them on your social media. Um, now I never claimed to be the listing agent for any of these in the beginning. In fact, I, I credited pretty much everyone I could find on social media. Um, but it definitely gave me that sort of social proof that, okay, I was in these types of listings. I know about them. I understand them. I must be affiliated with these. And then that ultimately gave me that luxury agent personal brand. Um, but yeah, it all started with going to open houses, basically convincing agents to let me <laughs> film in them and create some social media content. And uh, from there it was, okay, now agents are starting to reach out to me, asking me to come film their homes to do these exact type of videos. Nice. And uh, yeah, I think that's huge is like all brand is, is like association and you yeah. associate yourself with the type of homes that you want to sell. Totally. Content. Yeah. A hundred percent. And yeah. Uh, we just did like an interesting um, interview with Josh Flagg at, at Luxury Presence and and he he said it best. It's like, if you don't have listings yet, like you're not off the hook. Like there are so many different ways to create content around other people's listings, around other real estate in your market. And that's exactly what I did. Like I just hustled to try and find agents who would let me, you know, film content around their listings and it's totally doable. Anyone can do it. 
Yeah, and we can get to the podcast in a moment too. Um, I was just curious with this. I'm sure you figure out a way, like you've probably thought through like, okay, obviously I'm not going to show people the second and third bedroom. I'm not going to talk about like every single like minute feature in this house. Like here's what I'm going to focus on in the videos. Can you speak to like how you think through that structuring the video? Yeah, I just look at every home as if I am an audience member from uh, middle America who's never seen a $72 million home, you know? <laughs> it's like, sorry, that, that, I hope I didn't offend anyone there. That didn't mean, that probably sounded a bit offensive, but like just no, as if I, I had no. never seen, you know, a uh, luxury property like this, like what is the most captivating and interesting, unique parts of this home that other people um, would love to see. And uh, I think I've just kind of built in an eyeball for that, like whoa, specific angles, specific, uh, yeah, just shots and rooms, like what is going to be the most captivating, uh, engaging part of the home. And, you know, with a property like this, that's, that's pretty easy. You know, all, all of yeah. it's pretty interesting, but it's uh, like I mentioned earlier, like telling the story of the home is, is very important. Um, like I, every video you watch, you'll see of mine, um, typically like these, these, these home tours, I don't just start in one specific area and just show random places. I'm, I'm going through the home in a particular way. I'm, I'm telling the story the best I can of the home. And, and for this one, of course, it was like, this is a crazy view property. So I'm constantly showing different views. I'm constantly showing the different amenities, which I found to be really unique and special in a property like this. So yeah, just just finding the most engaging parts of the home. And and this is applicable to any property, right? Like yeah. even um, you know, a three bedroom home that you're selling for for three hundred K. Like obviously you want to highlight the main the main uh rooms, you know, the kitchen, the living room, the primary bedroom, but you don't need to show every single bathroom in the home. You know, you don't need to show the laundry room. Uh so just finding what you think other people will uh engage with the most is is the best way to go with there. Yeah, and I wanted to show, um, because I know that's like one very stark example, like going to 72 million. I think this is a good example of 2 million, of like the opposite side. Every house doesn't have to be completely ultra luxury. Here's what $2.4 million gets you in Toluca Lake, one of the best hidden gem neighborhoods in Los Angeles. The 2200 square foot home embodies Cape Cod architecture with contemporary living. Follow me inside. Charming entryway flows into the cozy living room with soaring vaulted ceilings, wonderful fireplace, and excellent views of the backyard. Adjacent, a lovely dining area flooded by natural light, which sits next to the chef's kitchen. The kitchen is certainly one of my favorite aspects of the home. Viking range, top of the line appliances, enhanced by stone countertops, and backsplash in addition to custom cabinetry and hardware. This is the cutest kid's bedroom with bean ceilings and ensuite bathroom with beautiful tile work. Down the hall sits the conveniently located primary suite. I love this little bay window moment. Very pretty primary bath. Just off the primary, another bedroom ideal for a nursery. You have to see what's upstairs. My personal favorite room, an upstairs bonus space, perfect for an office. The outdoor space is perfect for entertaining and it starts with this covered patio just off the living room. Now this is a phenomenal Phenomenal pool. It is really large relative to the size of the lot. Outdoor dining space right next to your covered garage. And to finish things off, a private and secure side yard for your kids to play. Can you talk to like the storytelling of that one a little bit? Yeah, for sure. Um, so like you said, like it's no $72 million uh, <laughs> mansion in, in Beverly Hills, but it's still a, a beautiful home in uh, kind of a, a lesser popular neighborhood of, of Toluca Lake. But um, you know, it was still about highlighting the the best parts of the home, um, starting with, you know, the the architecture, which is, is pretty desirable in that area. And um, just making sure the viewers saw the highlights. Um, I mean, the same uh, kind of strategy is, is applied in, in photos and in, in all property marketing, just making sure these people uh, are, are seeing the, the best parts of the home, but then also um, as I'm walking through, I'm just being a bit, um, like candid and, and, and casual as well. I'm, I'm not so like, here's the living room, here's the kitchen, here's this, here's that. Like I'm taking a second to be like, oh, like I actually really love this, this part of the home. I'm sitting there like the, the window in, in the primary, like 
um, being being a bit more casual and, and not robotic, I think goes a long way in, in these videos, like really showcase how one can can maximize this property. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's applicable to, to homes of all sizes and, and, and price points for the most part. And like this one, unlike the last one, like I was able to actually get in this video um, as opposed to just doing a voiceover, which, um, you know, as we talked about earlier, that establishes even more um, social proof for me. Um, I'm actually, you know, walking through the home and, um, but adding B roll is, is also super, super great. Um, just gives the viewer an even better perspective of, of the property itself. Yeah. I think one of the things that you do really well too, is like, there's a lot of visual variety, like, and you keep very succinct, concise, like word sentences, like you show a little bit of the house and then you're in the shot and it's like every couple of seconds there's like a change in something that you're saying or showing yeah for sure um as we mentioned before like the hook in the beginning of the video it's just as important actually to continuously hook people throughout the video and uh i i do that a lot through transition and just kind of quick bits of information like you won't see me standing somewhere still uh, talking for 10 seconds. I'm usually moving. So that's visually a lot more engaging than standing still. And I'm also usually only saying uh, a, a few words. I'm not, um, you know, speaking any essays as, a, as I'm going through the home. And it's, and it's usually, uh, yeah, pretty, pretty quick transitions, not a lot of dead space, not too quick. Like you want people to be able to digest what you're saying and what you're doing. Um, but it's, it's pretty eye catching. Um, I, I don't know how long that video was, maybe a minute, maybe a minute and 15, but most of my, my walkthrough videos aren't much longer than that. Um, it's just bite-sized pieces. Um, no one wants to sit through a, a five minute, uh, property walkthrough anymore. Uh, unless you're like Inez, uh, that's a whole different style of, of real estate content getting super in depth, which is awesome. And people obviously love that and resonate with that. But, um, yeah, it's just it's just different on on TikTok. You can't really get away with that. Yeah, um, and I just wanted to talk about this really quickly before getting into like the YouTube and all the brand work that you're doing uh, with the luxury presence brand. Yeah, I think one thing that came in the TikTok era that people were not like huge on before then was all this collaboration with content. Oh yeah, uh, and I think that's a huge unlock. Uh, so can you talk about how like you use that and the things? that you did with collaboration? hundred percent. Um, I, like I said earlier, not every home seller resonates with the whole, you know, social media campaign, um, aspect to, to selling homes, but some really do. And, uh, I can definitely sell them on, on bringing in influencers to get even more eyeballs than myself and collaborating with other influencers, especially those who create content around, uh, the luxury space, whether it be luxury homes or just um, kind of luxury in general, like you're playing right now with Daniel Mack, who has a massive audience who typically creates content for, uh, you know, people who are interested in, in, in luxury, luxury living, luxury lifestyle. Um, and so I have, uh, a list of, uh, content creators just like Daniel, um, who I've built relationships with over the years. And I, especially with homes, um, that, I know will perform well on social. I will basically pitch uh, collaborations with these agents, have media days, get them in there. Let's film content. Let's just get as many eyeballs on your property as, as possible. And uh, a lot of people go for it and, and, and love it. And I truly have seen the value, um, have, have gotten inquiries from doing collaborations like this. Um, so yeah, the, the, the collab aspect has been huge, especially like you mentioned recently in the past few years. Um, it's been great. So you, uh, you'll have like media days and stuff where you'll bring in like a bunch of different people. hundred percent. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's not always easy to, to provide access on a, on a random Tuesday, um, to, to people, especially if, if clients are living in the home. So we'll, we'll, uh, strategize a specific media day where, you know, they'll give me the home for, for five hours and I just bring in, uh, a handful of uh, content creators or, or people that I feel should should document the home and, and add it onto their social media. And it's mutually benefiting. You know, they get to come and film and create content at a really cool house and we get the eyeballs. 
Uh, yeah. So yeah, it's it's all positive stuff. That's awesome. I think that's like such an underrated strategy is like collaboration and content. So hundred percent. Yeah, absolutely. If if I'm a, a luxury real estate agent right now uh, in a market like Los Angeles, I'm reaching out to to content creators who have large audiences that would resonate with with uh, luxury homes, and I'm having them come film my my listings for sure. And uh, if I'm open to it, I'm getting in those videos as well, getting the eyeballs on me, building my personal brand. Um, so yeah, there's, there's a lot to leverage there. And like I said, it's mutually benefiting. A lot of these content creators would love to come film and, and do interesting things at these properties. So, uh, as long as you can control, uh, what exactly they're doing, what they're putting out there, because you want to do that, uh, um, for, for obvious reasons. Um, but you, you should definitely be taking advantage of that. Nice. So I wanted to kind of transition because it makes sense uh talk about the collaborations that you're doing with luxury presence um because when you're building a company brand uh like a team or brokerage you have to think about it a lot differently of how to build it what to do so could you kind of walk me through like the thought process of around okay here's the content strategy for luxury presence here's the platforms that we're doing here's the angles of content that we're going to play in because it's going to work well for us. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So yeah, like you said, personal brands are, are a bit different from from traditional brands, but ultimately it's it's almost the same the same play. Just create as much valuable content as possible, um, but it's got to be content that is specific to to your audience. And for luxury presence, it it really is, um, yeah, creating as much valuable content for our audience, but sprinkling in content that um you know heightens our our brand and and our social proof so testimonials um uh are are great for us we we do those pretty often um website spotlights that's even you know more ways for us to get um kind of that that social proof and and uh get other agents to to resonate with what we're doing and then of course like um messages and and updates from the company itself but I want to say 85% of our content is strictly value add content for real estate agents. We're not asking anything of them. We're, we're, we're always value up front first. And then once, uh, agents, you know, recognize the value that, that we provide, um, hopefully we're then able to build deeper relationships and, um, you know, turn those into, to client relationships. Yeah. Because the same thing that you're doing, like where you're, having like podcasts with like Josh and all of them uh, is the same thing like a team or a brokerage could do. They could have a podcast with other people in the industry and then you can have testimonials, like case studies. It's the same like general concept. Yep. It's just the nuances change depending on who your customer is. Yeah. Po- podcasting has changed everything for us. Um <laughs> There's just so many benefits to, to running a podcast. Um, it's genuine, it's authentic conversations that can then be chopped up into bite-sized pizzas, uh, repurposed for just about every social platform. Um, low budget, you know, um, it's completely broken uh, production barriers. Uh, you know, all you need is is two webcams, or not even webcams, two computers with, yeah. with a video capability that's really all you need on the most basic level but then it's it's just as easy to bring up that production with with some good audio and and some good video um but then just being able to repurpose that into so many different types of content is is awesome and really all it takes is an hour um you know you do two or three of these a month you have a month's worth of content right there um, so yeah, I highly advise anyone to, to run a podcast if you're looking to, to create content out of it. Yeah. Cause if you look here, like you have kind of like the long form here and then you have like different clips from the conversation below. And then if you go here, you can see like some of the different clips as well, more in short form. So yeah. I was curious, could you talk about like what you've learned doing like the short form, like having these clips, the long form, like. What's the thought process for you from a strategy perspective? Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, I, I, I kind of spoke to it, but it was, it was really just, you know, do the long form, 
uh, podcast episodes, clip those up into short form, valuable bite-sized pieces of information. And then all of those will have some sort of CTA. Either I'm trying to drive people to the longer form episode, but more than likely it's okay. Uh, For example, we just did that large A-list activation with Tracy Tudor and Josh Flagg. Um, they're, they're clients of ours now and, and we've done complete rebrands, website builds, uh, for all of them. So, um, you know, we're, we're taking pieces where they've touched on that in the interview. Um, we're, we're clipping those, uh, for maximum engagement. And then we have a CTA driving people to a landing page we've created for them where they've gone more in depth about their experience with us for people to learn more about how we then can help them. Uh, so there's, there's a few different, um, angles and, and strategies there, but, uh, usually it's, it's somewhat of a CTA back to us in, in some shape or form, but in the most authentic way possible, which, uh, a podcast does greatly. Yeah, that's, that's super smart. It's like you have this long form episode, you have them talk about like the website, et cetera. Then you clip that and then you create a custom landing page, put that into the description you have and you create this web of content that kind of feeds each other short form goes to long form and then people will see this they'll go to that landing page and they're like oh let me do business that's the same an agent could do the same thing absolutely you know if, if you bring on a, a client friend of yours and have a 15 minute chat about um you know it can be about <laughs> anything as long as at some point you ask them oh like we you know we sold your home uh, like five months ago, like it seemed like a great experience. Like, can you share your thoughts on, on how that went? Like, what was it like working with me? Um, and you know, you just get them to give a, a authentic testimonial. Um, you know, hopefully you can create a few pieces out of that podcast, but one of those should be that testimonial to then you can drive people to your website to, to maybe that listing or, um, just anything where they'll be able to learn more about you and, and what the experience will be like working with you. Um, so yeah, it's, it's totally doable as an individual agent team or brokerage. Yeah. Uh, so this is obviously like what I can see, what someone can see kind of like externally, um, from the content brand. I was curious if there's anything else that you've learned, uh, being the person, like I'm sure, like you're managing multiple people, uh, you're managing projects, you're managing a lot of different workflows. So now you're thinking in terms of like scale of production, uh, which I know you've also used earlier in your digital marketing agency days and all of that. So like, I was curious, what are you learning now and what are you kind of implementing? Yeah, I, I mean, I was pretty much a one man show uh, for, for five years as an agent. Um, yeah, I, I had some help with, with filming, but I was on my own in terms of strategy and overall production editing and, and uploading. And yeah, I've been able to take a lot of what I learned from that and apply it to my experience running the luxury presence brand. But I'm so fortunate to have, uh, a lot more, uh, assistance and support from, uh, professional editors, um, from, from our design team, Um, so kind of putting it all together has been an awesome experience and I've only been with a company for two months now. So still very much learning, um, how to optimize our workflow every single day. But, um, yeah, I, I think I've gotten a lot out of learning how to manage a team, um, how to implement some of my past experience into all of that. And, uh, it's just, it's a lot of growth, um, right now, which, which is great. It's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Is there anything just curious in particular you could talk about from like a, this is how to think of marketing from like a, a project or campaign, like higher level thinking? Um, yeah, um, for sure. I mean, like we, we do monthly campaigns, um, that we will have sort of strategized, um, you know, pretty far in advanced and I will, from those campaigns, uh, develops, you know, social strategies, but, you know, from those campaigns also come, you know, uh, email marketing strategies, paid ad strategies, um, from a broader marketing perspective, there's, there's a lot that goes into these overarching campaigns, but from a social 
standpoint, I'm I'm sort of strategizing all of this pretty pretty ahead of time. And you know, we have great task management software. We use Asana, which is which is amazing. I, I highly recommend it. Um, and so from there, I'm able to tag in um, our our designers, our our editors, uh, our our copy and content um, editors, and and um, you know, uh, basically be able to to organize ourselves as as best as, as possible as as with as much time as possible. So it's definitely figuring out those those workflows. Um, but at the same time, like you also have to be able to work on the fly as a social media marketing manager. You know, there are, uh, of course, like 10 pull events you can capitalize on, but there are things that will happen day of where it's like, oh my God, like we can create awesome content out of that. Like, let's get on it. And that's really where I think my value really shines is my ability to then mm-hmm. get in front of a camera, create content around that, create super quick stories that we can throw up. Um, so, uh, it's, it's a balance of being able to strategize, uh, campaigns in, in the long term, but then also be able to capitalize on things that are coming up instantly. Like for example, um, um, oh my God, I'm blanking out on the biggest Asian in the world, Ryan Serhant. Um, we, we just relaunched, uh, the Serhant website, uh, in conjunction with the launch of his new television show. And uh, the site got like 10,000 X viewership in, in like a week or something like that. It it was like insane. And we were like, holy shit, like we definitely have to capitalize on this. Like this is a excellent like case study. And so I immediately like whipped up content day of for us to throw up and it wasn't super produced. It wasn't perfect, um, but it didn't need to be like, it was, it was an authentic reaction to uh how awesome it was for them to get that audience and see that massively increased web traffic um so yeah like i said it's it's a balance being able to work on the fly and capitalize on things that come up at a moment's notice but also you know strategize long-term campaigns yeah i think that's a huge thing that you probably like really mastered throughout like the tiktoks short form is like how to take something that's like in the moment and like ride that wave. Cause if you can do that, that can get a lot of attention that way. Yeah. hundred percent. I mean, trends are, are everything. Um, and, uh, I always say like one of the most important things you can do is actually be just a consumer yourself. Like you really can't learn what is out there, what's going on in the world, especially on social media without being a consumer, uh, engaging with content, seeing what other agents are doing, seeing what people outside of your industry are doing, and then applying that to your own uh, sort of strategy there. You know, you can subscribe to all the newsletters, all the tools in the world, which will tell you what's trending, what isn't trending, but being an actual active engager yourself, watching videos, understanding why they're performing well or why they're not performing well, and then being able to apply that analysis to your own content is one of the most important things you can do as someone who's looking to truly leverage social media to grow their, their brand or business. Yeah. And, uh, just out of curiosity, I'm sure you pay attention to a lot of people like who are some of your favorite, it doesn't have to be in real estate. It could be outside like sources of inspiration for like content ideas. It could be an account. It could be a newsletter. It could be books. What are some of those for you? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I I am very much what I just said, a pretty active engager and watcher of of all different types of content. But from a real estate perspective, uh, there's no one really doing it quite like Ryan Serhant. Like he's he's got it down. Um, he's he's doing some really cool stuff and has been doing some really cool stuff um, from just a content strategy, but an overall you know digital marketing perspective like he's he's the man um but then uh love people like glenda baker who is like the most authentic storyteller on tiktok and it's no surprise she's grown such an engaged large audience um and and by doing so through content that any agent can can create really um you know storytelling is is huge when it comes to to social media and every single one of you watching this can tell me a story about um you know your your wildest sale or the most interesting request someone asks you to do during a showing. Those are all things that people love to hear and they're uh, authentic and, and true to you and, and your audience will resonate with them 
far more than you posting a photo of a, you know, just listed. Um, so, uh, those, those are two people that I really admire, uh, in, in the real estate world, but, oh man, I, I could go on and on about other people outside of it, but I'll, I'll leave it with those two. Okay. And, uh, yeah, those Glenda's amazing. Uh, and Ryan just the, the biggest example of building a personal brand. So <laughs> those are definitely great to, to name. Um, if people want like more of you, they want to ask you like digital marketing questions, uh, where should they go? Yeah, um, I'm I'm happy to to advise um, and and give direction. You can reach out to me on any social media platform. Aaron Grusho Homes. Shoot me a DM. Um, follow our our luxury presence site. Even if you're an agent who uh, who has a website, has their marketing down packed, we we definitely share a lot of really great, valuable tidbits of information that you can use to to grow your brand or business. So find us at at Luxury Presence on just about any other social platform. Uh, call me, text me, email me. I'm uh, I'm open and, and and love to chat. Awesome. So yeah, people will reach out there. Uh, I did want to ask that being in real estate or really being any like entrepreneur, um, sales, business owner, like it's never easy. Like as we talked about earlier, there's the highs and the lows. And I think that's what kind of makes like the business and sales a little bit fun. So I was curious, like when you look back at like the earlier days, uh, I'm sure it wasn't always easy or straight shot up for you. Could you talk about that? Like the tough times that you had to kind of push through and keep going? Yeah, um, it, it really was all down to, to mindset, like understanding I'm still young and I realized like we're not all, you know, in our 20s here, but um, I, 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 I knew that I was able to sort of explore my passions and, and I was so fortunate to be able to do that, having, you know, saved up some money and, and, um, just, I think my passion was, was the drive for everything. Like, unfortunately I'm someone who needs to love what they're doing to, <laughs> to really excel at it. I suck at doing things that I, I don't love and I, I don't have interest in. Uh, I don't know if that's a great quality, but um, for me, it was just like aligning myself with things that I, I love doing and I have a passion for. And even though I knew they weren't going to work out always, and, and it wasn't always going to be a perfect day and up day, I knew I still loved what I was doing. And I knew, you know, it was, it's, it's all still a journey. You know, I'm still, so I still feel like I'm barely scratching the surface with, with all this stuff. Like there's so much potential for growth. So many things are, are about to change. We're going to be able to take advantage of so many new technologies and cool things coming into our, our world. Like we all just need to go in with that curious mindset, like, okay, um, not everything's going to work. Um, most things probably won't, but some things will. And, and when we find the things that will like, let's, let's explore those more. So yeah, it was, it was really just a matter of me trying to stay passionate and curious about what I was doing, um, and and just trying to keep that positive mindset even during those those dark days. Yeah, I think, and you say true to yourself. You've always done stuff around like your passion uh, with content, with marketing, social media, uh, all of that. So uh, I think that's really cool to see. Uh, one last thing: you were quick into TikTok uh, and other things. Is there anything? It could be a platform. It could be a tech anything that you are just like paying attention to right now? Yeah, that's, that's a good question. Um, in terms of platforms, uh, I don't think I have anything stand out for you, but tech, artificial intelligence, like hundred percent AI is just currently and will continue to change everything that we do in, in every single way. Um, but especially from a content creator perspective. Um, there's some awesome tools that will enable agents to really streamline the content creation process from strategy to production to, you know, editing and, and scheduling and, and posting and, and managing, um, workflow from, from start to finish. So yeah, I'm really paying attention to, to AI and, and, uh, the tools we can be leveraging.